Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm coming back with part two of the park gate project I'm doing with my dad. So in the last part, we installed the subfloor all downstairs with this OSB. So check out the previous video if you haven't done so already. So today we're gonna be starting laying the park gate floor. The glue we're using is Sika and we got it in Ballymun directly from Sika themselves and they guarantee that it'll work with the bitumen. You might have noticed already that we didn't clean the bottom of the tiles and we just cleaned the sides so that they'll sit together closely, but we didn't need to clean off the bitumen on the bottom. There were a few with like really thick pieces of bitumen, but we just sort of tapped that off with a chisel. So I left this part in because there was an awful lot of hoovering and cleaning up. So every day we were moving everything from one room to the next, from one room to the next, um, to clear out whatever room we're working on at that time. So here we're just using old skirting boards and we're measuring a straight line, well as straight as we can because we're doing it from a wall that's completely not straight. So anyway, we put down um, the skirting board and screwed it into the subfloor and this is going to be our guide for the first line of parquet. It just means that it won't move and we can get a first line perfect and it just means your pattern will continue to be good then. So here my dad is investigating how to do this because he couldn't remember where to start and this is how we're doing the pattern. As you can see there's a 90 degree angle at the point um, and that's what you're hoping to get each time. You'll see the first time we're doing anything I'm just watching my dad do it and he's talking me through it. So it's the same with every new technique. He's telling me how to do it, I'm doing it and then I'm shooing him away and telling him I can do it now, I can do it. <laughs> Um, there's nothing worse than someone watching you do something when you're you you're learning how to do it. But anyway, we're using a four mil square tooth trowel to put down the glue, and this is to ensure you have a good layer underneath, but you're not also using too much because the glue is really expensive. So yeah, I think I can't remember how many tubs we used, um, and I think the glue was around two hundred euro a tub. I think we might have used like six tubs. Um, I'll have to have a look. Um, yeah, so we're using the skirting board to keep our pattern all the way down as you can see and we're just doing one line this day and then letting it dry overnight so then we can start um, adding to it the next day. It just means that all your tiles won't move which is a pain because when the pattern goes off um, you can fix it but it is difficult so um, if you let it go off and it's not at a 90 degree angle like I was saying then that issue will just carry forward into each row. I have to say this was one of the most exciting days because we were seeing the tiles going down for the first time and it was very, very satisfying to see all of the prep work we'd been doing for the last few while, probably like a few weeks, um, including the cleaning. Uh, finally coming to fruition and seeing what it's going to look like. There's my dad having a little break. And <laughs> um, we got along so well throughout this whole project. We had such a nice time doing it. So I'm really excited to be sharing it with you now. Anyway, there I am doing a little dance because we're putting in another layer. So this is the day after and we're putting in the next layer in the kitchen. It was quite slow to get the layer next to the layer that had dried overnight in properly you really had to hammer it in so um, when I'm putting it in I'm using a hammer and the glue trail and we did a line of glue at a time so the width of a uh, tile all the way down usually not here though just as I said um, and then we're sweeping away any dust before we put the glue down and we're using our trail to make sure that it's all the same depth of the glue and then we're putting down our tiles and using a hammer if we need to. So I found that if you're hammering too much, you could end up dropping them out of their, pushing them out of their pattern. So you have to be careful with that. My dad was doing the glue for me because my back was broken. I've sped this up some more because I know it can get really boring, but it's really satisfying seeing this going down. So I did want to include it, but I didn't want to bore you too much. But it is really satisfying seeing each line going down and seeing it come together. It 
my dad marked um, the width of two boards plus 10 mil for expansion and we glued up to that point and then we'll be cutting away any excess later on so you'll see us doing that later on but that's just for the laying part my dad had to go out this day to deliver a phone box so it meant i was on my own doing this and um, once my dad showed me how to do it i was quite confident um, there were a few times where I was like oh is the pattern going off too much because it does happen and an element of it is okay but it's just trying to get that 90 degree angle um, with the boards meeting and um, so some gaps are okay but others will like carry on into your pattern and here at the like last few rows I really struggled to keep up the pattern but it didn't really matter too much because we weren't continuing it on so it's not as if the issue was going to get worse and worse and worse and um, so if you had an issue in the middle of the room it would be more of a big deal and um, but here it's it's not as big of a deal so after we finished one side of the kitchen we removed the skirting boards that were holding the first line in place and started doing this side so this line that we're working off here is the line that was completely dry so as i said it's quite difficult to get them in line with this because the other ones just aren't budging at all and um, so yeah you just have to sort of manipulate them in and then you just keep going we wanted to bring the line through the kitchen into the living room because we have two open doors so we didn't want to have a border in between the two rooms because it's both going to be oak in these two rooms so um we flowed the line all the way down but unfortunately when my dad was cutting the border he totally forgot and he cut through the continuous line as if we were going to do a border in between the two rooms so um he actually had to take them out and put them back in i didn't film any of this because when a mistake like that happens the last thing you want to do is get a phone out <laughs> but um yeah you'll see um, when it's finished that the line does continue all the way through and um, because my dad then cut out all the ones that he'd cut in half and replaced them We also brought the wood in overnight before we use it because it just has to get to room temperature and not be too cold. I was storing it in my garage so it would have been too cold and it needs to just get accustomed to the room it's going to be in for some reason. Um, and you can see we stored them in these Tesco crates we got and yeah, we did not steal them from Tesco. <laughs> but no, um, we stored them in that and we just brought them in as we needed them. And it was really satisfying seeing them go from the garage and empty out. So here's my dad doing the living room also. Um, same technique. We do the same technique. I learned from the best. <laughs> um, this is a really cool angle because you can just see him flying through it. The light was running out on me here so apologies for this footage but my dad had left for the day and I just kept going into the night to get this room done. We use the same technique in the hall and the front room. We're using teak wood here. This is left over from my dad's house. So we're doing the hall and the front room in teak because we didn't think we'd have enough oak. We did run out of teak though and we did an oak border in the front room which actually ended up lovely. So yeah, same techniques used in both of these rooms also.
Hey guys, what's up? Thought I'd give you an update from the floor, of course. Um, I'm at the end of my two weeks off work, so I've had my dad here every day and we have got so much done. It's actually insane, but I am so tired. That is also insane. So I think this has really broken us <laughs> um, emotionally, physically, everything. So um, we're glad to be in the last stretch of it now. So I'm just going to do the edging today, get the border on. Um, I have footage of me doing that, so you'll see that. But yeah, we've got then the sanding to do and the finishing, like the stain or the lacquer or whatever. Um, so that is what is left. It's been really rewarding, but also really, really tiring. <laughs> So um, yeah, we're delighted with what we've got done, but I guess it hasn't really sunk in. Yeah, it's really exciting. I am really excited to see it finished now. I'm really excited to see it sanded. So hopefully we'll get that done soon. The border's actually been the worst job. Like I really don't like doing it. So then in order to get the border in, we used a plunge saw and a guide, and this allowed my dad to cut off the width of two boards so that we could do a border horizontal all the way around and um, this just meant you didn't have to cut each individual tile so it was really smart and um, my dad used this method before when he did it in his house This part was so satisfying so you're removing all the pieces that my dad just cut off and there were a few stubborn pieces I had to use the multi-tool or the saw again to get them out but um, then we were able to put in the border so the border will go like a brick pattern two um, boards all around and it just needs to be put everywhere I thought this job would be super super simple it was anything but I hated doing the border um, we did a one border distance there in the hall, by the way, just in case you're wondering why it's thinner because um, it's such a small space. So yeah, to do the border, we had to hoover, make sure it was all free from dust, then chisel out any remaining pieces and get rid of any glue in the way. Then my dad was teaching me how to do the edges. So yeah, then you just glue it down as you went along. I found afterwards that actually cutting and making sure that everything fit and doing a dry lay of them was much easier and then gluing them down especially in awkward areas like the corridor of doom I'm about to show you. So again I thought this little room would be the quickest thing ever. This took me all day. I had so much footage of this time lapse I had to just cut it down because there was just way too much but basically to do this corridor it took me all day because there were so many cuts so I'm using the chop saw to cut down any that don't fit to make sure that they all line up nicely. So here I'm doing a dry fit and then I'm going in with glue afterwards um, because it was just way too complicated. Because there's like four doors on this it was so difficult. Also some of the doors, door frames I hadn't cut off enough so I had to go back and do them which was a pain. But um, finished it in the end, was slightly with how it looked, um, but it was very frustrating. So I'll show you the end result now. Here's my dad enjoying a cup of coffee, excited by all our work. That smile leaves his face in the sanding period. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so here is the corridor afterwards. You can see we need a few thin bits on the doors there, but we needed a table saw for them, so we hadn't done them yet. Um, the front room was really easy to do because it's sort of like a square so did the border in there really quickly I wish everywhere had been this easy the border is on in the hall it looks so much more finished now um, and you can see all the way through so all the borders are done we did an oak border in here as I said because we ran out of teak but um, it ends up looking really nice so there's the border in the front room and that's the borders done thank god god so also i wanted to do something different in the porch because i love to make my life hard and i want to do a checkered pattern 
I cut all these myself, but they weren't perfect. So we ended up ripping all of this up and doing it again. I'll show you that in the next video. But on the next video, we'll be going through the sanding, the filling and the varnishing. So I really hope you'll come back to watch that. And thanks so much for watching and I hope you'll like and subscribe.